This is Bernard Bendock from the Department of Neurosurgery at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine and Northwestern Medicine. I'm presenting the case of a complex bilo left superior hypophyseal internal carotid aneurysm that was treated with stent assisted coiling. The patient is a 62 year old female who, after being worked up for a transient left sided weakness, was found to have a incidental large left bilobed superior hypophyseal aneurysm. The aneurysm measured 11 millimeters in maximal length and it had a 5 millimeter uh, neck. It had two lobes, a more distal 6 by 5 millimeter lobe and a more proximal 3 to 4 millimeter lobe. The neck of the aneurysm measured 5 millimeters. This CTA nicely illustrates the anatomy of the parent artery and the aneurysm, showing its complex bilobed anatomy. The options were carefully reviewed with the patient. We were concerned about the bilobe nature of the aneurysm, posing higher than average natural history risk. The options of observation, stent-assisted coiling, and microsurgery were all presented to the patient. The patient elected after careful consideration to have the aneurysm treated with stent-assisted coiling. The patient was placed on aspirin and Plavix starting seven days before the procedure. After informed consent was obtained, stent-assisted coiling was performed under general anesthesia. A 7 French by 80 centimeter sheath was placed into the left comicar artery using an exchange link technique, and neuron guide catheter was subsequently placed into the left intracar artery below the skull base. This oblique angiogram shows the aneurysm separated from the parent artery. On this uh, fluoroscopic video, you will see that the 21 microcatheter has been placed into the uh, left M1 segment of the middle cerebral artery. A 17 microcatheter has been placed into the aneurysm, and you can see here that we're going to trap the microcatheter in the aneurysm. Our technique involves deploying part of the first coil into the aneurysm to stabilize the microcatheter in the aneurysm prior to deploying the stent. This is a lateral view of the same procedure. The 21 microcatheter has been placed into the M1 segment. The 17 microcatheter is in the aneurysm with part of the first coil being deployed into the aneurysm. This stabilizes the microcatheter in the aneurysm. After this is done, the stent is then deployed across the neck of the aneurysm. This AP fluoroscopic video shows the coil partially deployed into the aneurysm. Here you can see that we're starting to unsheath the stent. Using a push-pull technique, the stent will be unsheathed here. You can see here the distal stent tines starting to open up uh, in the uh, supraclinal carotid artery. Stent deployment uh, is continued proximal to the aneurysm until the proximal stent struts are seen to open. The stent wire was then pulled back into the microcatheter and the 21 microcatheter was removed. More coils are then placed into the aneurysm. Based on the direction of the microcatheter and the anatomy of this particular aneurysm, the coils preferentially de deployed into the larger lobe of the aneurysm. With subsequent coils, uh, loops started to herniate into the smaller lobe, creating a basket in the smaller lobe. The elongated nature of the aneurysm made even coil distribution slightly challenging, but here you can see the coil loops nicely distributing within the smaller lobe of the aneurysm. You can see here an attempt at placing one more small coil into the aneurysm, but this coil deposited mostly at the neck of the aneurysm, so we removed it. Even though there was still some residual filling of the smaller lobe, we decided to end the procedure here to maximize safety. This final angiogram shows a small amount of interstitial filling of the aneurysm, particularly in the smaller lobe. We decided not to recatheterize the aneurysm to minimize the chance for stent uh, migration. We felt that it was highly likely that this smaller lobe would thrombose over time. The patient will be brought back for a six-month follow-up angiogram and further coiling if necessary. The patient tolerated the procedure well and awoke without neurological deficits and was discharged home the day after the procedure.